the Los Angeles Coliseum was where it all began for Supercross in 1972. Six years later, the famed arena was poised to be the site of one of the greatest comebacks in Supercross history. Yamaha's Bob Hurricane Hanna had been battling the winner of the first two Super Bowl of Motocross events, Honda's Marty Tripes, all season. The determined Hurricane could wrap up the championship that night in LA if everything fell into place. It did, sort of. Bob Hanna, the superstar of Supercross motorcycle racing. Here's Marty Smith, who crashed here so hard three years ago. For all of them, the critical importance is the start of this race. You need a good start. You're worried about getting a good start, but if you don't get a good start, you're screwed. A thundering herd of expensive motorcycles and talent down into turn number one. As the scramble unshuffles, it's Gary Semix, number 11, who comes out on tap. Bob Hanna is stuck in traffic way at the back of the pack. I got the whole shot. I just rode it as hard as I could possibly go. Basically, 70,000 people came there to see Bob Hanna get a bad start. Bob starts in the front third. It's a pretty foregone conclusion. But if he starts in the back, it's like, well, this is going to be extra good. Yeah, you let out a few profanities, and then you and you got a ride. While Hannah went to work, his young Yamaha teammate, Mike Bell, had gotten a similar start. It was just going to just be another long night of trying to pass people. 20 laps each time. You're going to have to go through that water hole, and it's going to be a swamp before this one's over. I didn't know who was behind me or didn't care about it. 140,000 eyes are focused on Gary Semex right now as he tries to take what would be the biggest win of his career today. With Semex storming ahead, the hurricane had strengthened to a Category 4 and was swirling through the pack. When you've started bad like that, uh, sometimes you ride better because you're behind the eight ball. I mean, you have to go. Bob Hanna has passed 15 riders in the first two laps. Some of the slow turds are in the back, so they're easy to pass. Maybe you can get them, <laughs> get a few at a time. It didn't matter where Bob started, it seemed like. I mean, I think he was dominant enough that he could come through the pack. You know, and they're screwing up, so you just got to watch what you're doing and go outside, inside. California's Gary Semix out front, then Arizona's Carlos Serrano and Oregon's Rick Burgett. Burgett was one of those guys where, similar to Ricky Johnson, if you hit him, you just kind of bounced off of him. Right on his tail is number one, Bob Hanna, into fourth spot, and chasing him is Mike Bell. When Hanna passed me, I knew where he was going. He was going to the front. Bell has come up through traffic following Hanna's charge. And all I just, I just tried my best to try to stay with him. And they're handlebar to handlebar in the race for fourth place, Hanna and Bell. But a bad start would only be the first of Bob Hanna's challenges to the championship that night. Another Yamaha teammate, Rick the Lumberjack Burgett, would lay another obstacle in the hurricane's path. Bob Hanna is closing on his teammate, Rick Burgett. Ricky looked over. It's like when you tap somebody on the left shoulder and you're on the right hand side. Hanna trying to anticipate forgets every move. Goes alongside. Oh, they bump together. Ricky runs me off the track. And I don't think it's intentional. It just happens. Hanna has to re-enter the course at the point where he left. And if I'd have got back on six feet ahead, which it really wouldn't have mattered right after I'm off, they could have docked me a lap. And if they did, then the night's over, you know. So after that valiant charge through traffic, Bob Hurricane Hanna, Whittier, California, fastest man in American motocross today, once again must play catch up ball. I'm back another six or eight spots, and here we go again. On his second charge from behind of the night, Hanna would again run into trouble, courtesy of race promoter Mike Goodwin's idea of an innovative track feature. The mud was getting splashed over in the track next to it, and people were crashing because it's so slippery. And I don't know who did it, but I got tangled up in it and finally get out of it and go around it. That's the third tangle he's been in tonight. It's got to affect his concentration. If you take your mind off in any stadium event for just maybe a second, you'll end up. <laughs> for sure, I've done it before. It's like three races for me. <laughs> I just keep going back, up, back, up. By lap 14, the Hurricane had moved himself again within view of the leaders to fourth. Five. Now, Bob Hanna is closing on Jimmy Ellis. Ellis is closing on Mike Bell. 
everybody is closing on Gary Seven. Yeah, I just was surprised, I guess, to stay out there lo that long. I was just pumped, you know, I just wanted to stay out there. Anna has the line. Anna has taken over third place. Keep hammering it. Don't slow down. And with that pass, Anna has the potential to reign as the 1978 Toyota Supercross champion. Meanwhile, at the front, Mike Bell had placed himself in second behind Semix, but that wouldn't be good enough for the young Yamaha rider. You know, it took a while. It wasn't like he was getting getting lapped. I'm wanting Simics to hold Bell up, obviously, because Bell's a better rider, and Bell's going to go when he gets by. Mike Bell will try the low line. Bell is inside. Bell has taken the lead. And just had a good run in on, on Gary and made stick. Semix wants to reclaim that lead that was his for 15 of these 20 laps. Not to make excuses, but it was my fault for not winning, but uh, the muffler fell off, too. The silencer fell off. I'm catching in there where I can see Simics and Bell, so I know they're right there. 120 foot leaps to the floor of the Coliseum. No, Semix stays out front. The race for second. Into that tight right hander. Hannah's alongside. Hannah has made the pass. Luckily for me, I catch him at the same spot a lap later. I pass him, and then the chase is on. There is pandemonium in this venerable old stadium. 70,000 people on their feet because it's all come down to this. And if you've got that many people roaring, it's like twice the uh, DBs is Anaheim Stadium. The white flag, one more lap to go. I could hear all the cheers and Hannah was like all over me. Bell sees his advantage shrink as Hannah charges on the outside. He's just a guy that always would find a way to, to win a race. Bob was banging on him pretty hard. I mean, he was trying to get in there as much as he could. Last corner, don't worry about him being a teammate. Hey, yeah, do what you got to do. He made it very clear that we may have been teammates, but we were not friends. As the last lap drifted away behind his factory Yamaha YZ, Bob Hanna would let it all hang out as he tried to catch the inflappable bell. All out, last ditch, winner take all, the climax of the Super Bowl. Hanna clipped the hay bale as he desperately tries to reel in Mike Bell. A real skilled rider, if he wants to go into a corner and get set up for the berm, you know, maybe use a hay bale to blast his sorry ass out in there. And Last turn, final charge. Mike Bell takes the checkered flag. Bell has won the Super Bowl of motocross over Bob Hurricane Hanna. Did you know how close Hanna was getting to you as you went through the night? All I was getting was the signals from my mechanic, and I just didn't want him to get any smaller. We got into the last corner. I don't know what I'd have done. I, I probably would have, you know. His teammate Bob Hanna had won the 1978 Supercross Championship for Yamaha, but victory for Mike Bell would not be fully realized until he was far from the lights and the fans of the LA Coliseum. Woke up with a big smile, I was like, oh, it's just a dream. And on my dresser, um, my dad had put the trophy. Right then, you know, just like now, it just sends chills through my, through my whole body. I won Super Bowl motocross.